everyone. I'm Amber Cook, carnivore caretaker here at the Oklahoma City Zoo. Today you're watching OKC Zoo at Two, where we are meeting our river otters, Rocky and Pip, at their Big Rivers habitat in the Oklahoma Trails. Pip, our female otter, is 16 years old, and Rocky, our male, is five years old. He came to us from Miller Park Zoo in 2016, and they've been together ever since. Pip is gonna be slightly smaller in size. Um, I think she's a little darker in coloration, where Rocky is a little bit on the heftier side, um, but both healthy, both well and active. Personalities, it's gonna be hard to tell because they are both very active. In the wild, North American River otters typically live to be about nine years of age. While in human care, when they have all the shelter, food, and veterinary care that they may need, they can live to be, have a life expectancy over 12 years of age. Pip is definitely getting older in age. Uh, she is significantly older than Rocky. Um, at this point in time, we are able to monitor her daily through training. Uh, we can observe her body and her, her movements. Currently, she's doing very well. Uh, I think the fact of having Rocky around, being so young and active, probably helps keep her active as well. So Rocky and Pip get along very well. Throughout the days, we'll see them socializing, playing together, and even snuggling up in the sun together as well. North American river otters are primarily carnivores. They're going to be opportunistic in what they decide to eat. So typically they're going to go for fish. So that swimming skill is extremely important for them. Um, other items that they may choose are going to be fish, uh, frogs, crustaceans, small mammals, and even some small birds. These guys are impressive swimmers and they can hold their breath over four minutes long underwater. And their swimming is very acrobatic in style. They do a lot of hunting in the water for fish. However, they are known to travel across land, as you might be seeing today, to get to other food sources, potential mates, and even to find shelter along the waterways. So to mimic natural behaviors in the wild, we try to offer them as many feedings as possible. So typically they're getting about four feedings a day, sometimes even more, and we'll change the styles that they have to obtain those food items. We try to change their habitats as often as possible to keep it exciting and bring out natural behaviors. So today we have quite a few different ones. We have some boomer toys, which are basically balls that we put food into. They can roll those balls around. We have some floating toys as well that they can go on top of. And a couple different options for their food to be scattered about and provided for them. In the wild, their numbers and the genders that they hang out with changes. Um, when they are raising their young, those moms are gonna keep those pups with them and get them to a good age. Um, and then the males and the females will typically come together for that breeding season. Uh, they have seen male groups in the wild and that are potentially non-related, and then they have seen some female-related groups as well. The presence of river otters in a waterway system tells us how healthy that system is, that ecosystem. If they're there, then that water system is doing well and we have a bright future ahead. If we're lacking, then we need to monitor that area a little bit more. Otters are definitely susceptible to habitat loss as well as to pollution. Um, it's some of the two biggest factors affecting the otters as of now. Certain things that we can do to help otters in the wild is to stop using and limit the amount of single-use plastics such as plastic straws and plastic bags. Limiting the use of plastic bags and plastic straws, we can actually help all otter species throughout the world, not just North American river otters. Thank you for watching OKZ Zoo at Two, keeping Oklahoma connected during our temporary closure.